Good morning, and a warm welcome to each of you who has come to give witness to the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and to celebrate the life of Martha Hudson. Now hear these words of scripture that have given comfort and strength to Christians throughout the ages. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. He will feed his flock like a shepherd, and he will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom. I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Let us pray. Eternal God, we bless you for the great company of all those who have kept the faith, finished their race, and who now rest from their labor. We praise you for those dear to us. Especially we thank you for Martha, whom you have now received into your presence. Help us to believe where we have not seen trusting you to lead us through our years. Bring us at last with all your saints into the joy of your home. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This time I would ask you to take out your hymnal and stand and join as we sing How Great Thou Art, number 16. Please join me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me 
the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Please be seated. It is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give away and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice and the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. 
the God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolations he has brought on earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still, know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in earth. The second reading today comes from the 14th chapter of John, verses 1 through 7. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you may, may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Martha J. Hudson, 93, passed away at 2.50 a.m. on Tuesday, August 17, 2021, at Proctor Place in Peoria. She was born March 4, 1928, to Howard and Louise Schisler Schlotz. She married Lester Hudson on January 15, 1949, at the First Presbyterian Church in Elmwood. He preceded her in death on December 29, 1990. Martha is survived by four children, Pat and Jean Vaughn of Elmwood, Joan and Dave Gorham of Elmwood, Ellen and Paul Morensic of Oglesby, and Rocky and Karen Hudson of Mapleton. Eight grandchildren, Matt and Renee Vaughn, David and Katie Vaughn, Jennifer and Brad Kennedy, Tom and Ed Gorham, Angela and Joe Wyatt, Hannah Morensic, Alicia and Jason Brown, and Sam and Hyrule Hudson. 20 great grandchildren and one great, great grandchild. She is also preceded in death by her parents, one brother, Donald Schlotz, and one sister, Marjorie Clem. Martha was a former member of the Elmwood Community Chorus, the PEO Chapter AO, and the First Presbyterian Church of Elmwood for 80 years. She will be deeply missed. Let us pray. O oh Lord, our God, we ask now that your spirit and your presence might be with us. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts may be acceptable in your sight, O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. As we are gathered here in the sanctuary, this congregation that Martha has been a member of since she was 13 years old, to remember and celebrate her life, I extend my deepest sympathies to each of you, her beloved family. Those of you gathered here, you know Martha. You know her childhood, her married life, her working life on being a helpmate and farmer's wife, her life as a mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, and even great-great-grandmother. But how do we accept that an obituary is a complete picture of her? To sum up a person's life in just a few words read aloud, a few words of remembrance, and a few memorials. Martha saw many changes in her life of 93 years. Why, when she was born in 1928, a year prior to the stock market crash of October 1929, the beginning, of course, of the Great Depression, which lasted through most of the 1930s, she was 13 years old when Pearl Harbor was hit and marked the entrance of the United States into World War II. She saw advancements in housekeeping and kitchen appliances, in medical and dental care, advancements in transportation and in communication. Now she was fit and well able to do the jobs of a farm wife, raising her three girls, Pat, Joan, and Ellen, and son, Rocky, tackling every chore, 
every task, every event with diligence and enthusiasm. And that's because family was a tremendous joy in her life. Her children growing up and meeting their mates, then raising their own families, the family circle getting larger and larger, getting everyone together for family suppers, for reunions, and for the big party for Lester out on the farm. I believe that God gave us relationships with others as a special way to be connected by blood, by friendship, and by the love of Christ. Speaking of family, perhaps you're familiar with the other woman, also known as the Proverbs 31 woman. She lived her life of faith as one who served and ministered to others. Hers was a faith that was demonstrated through love, patience, kindness, care, and compassion. Proverbs 31 describes a woman who serves and cares for her family. Let me share with you just a few of these verses. She is like the merchant ships, bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is still night in order to prepare food for her family and portions for her female servants. She considers a field and buys it, and out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for the tasks. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. She is clothed with strength and dignity and can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom, and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. That's the best part, isn't it? Verse 28, and her children rise up and call her blessed. Those are high words of praise from Martha Hudson. We also have familiar words that are found in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, reminding us that Jesus will prepare a way for us, for those who believe in him. You remember in this passage that John argues and says in disbelief, well, no, actually, Lord, we don't know the way. How can we know the way? To this, we have the well-known and well-loved words that Christians cling to. For Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Don't you see? We don't need to have it all mapped out in front of us. We just need to believe in Jesus Christ, our Lord. And because we believe in Jesus Christ, he will prepare the way and will come and bring us with him. Let us hear his word of hope at this time, for we are not afraid because we believe in him. And that means that we never have to manage all on our own. We can always go to him and be helped by him. Preparations have been made for us, for each of us. And we can have faith in him to always be by our side. Martha's 80 years of being a member of this congregation saw her for many years as a Sunday school teacher she served the Lord as a deacon and also as an elder. She sang in the choir. She helped with cooking dinners and picnics and pretty much any time the church doors were open. She was here helping and serving others. There's no doubt in any of our minds that she has been led by our Lord to the place that he has prepared for her. And now she is at peace and rest. 
to all of you, her family left behind. Use her life as an example for your own faith. Don't let the busyness and the social clutter of the world keep you from a meaningful relationship with the Lord Jesus. We are encouraged to seek the Lord while he may be found. And if we seek, he will be found. Take time to reconnect with your church, to reconnect with your faith in the Lord. And there you will find strength and comfort as you go through this time of grieving. Amen. As you can see in your bulletins, we have a, a time where we have tributes and remembrances. This is your opportunity out in the congregation to take the microphone and to share a story of Martha, to share a thought or a memory, something that perhaps the rest of us don't know about, but would enhance our love and our memory of her all the more. So I invite now, if you have a, a memory or a thought, if you'll please just raise your hand and Brandy will get the microphone to you. <laughs> I remember I was, it was a very sunny fall day. I think I was out raking weeds. I was in middle school. And I remember, you know, the trucks coming in with harvest. And I remember seeing a Hudson Farms truck come through, it was a grain truck, and I expected to see Lester or Rocky driving. And with the biggest smile on her face, tootling into town, there's Martha driving that grain truck. I thought, that has got to be the best job in the world. My name is Terry Bowen, and um, I grew up with Ellen, and that was a joke. But one of my favorite memories was spending the night Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, ladies. They came in and they're taking their course. 
Did I see another hand? There's another. I guess food is the theme of the conversation here. Um, I used to work for John Deere many years ago, and uh, we were putting on shows in Phoenix, Arizona. Well, Martha and Lester were out there at the same time and they had their motor home with them. I've been out there for maybe a month or so and kind of missed being home. But Martha and Lester kind of remedied that situation. They bring the motor home over to the hotel where I was staying, park out in the parking lot, cook up a couple of steaks and some potatoes and vegetables and dessert, and feed the old Iowa country boy. And I love that. I I'd gone to heaven and was already on the way back. Um, they uh, also took me one time out to a place out in the middle of the desert. I can't even tell you the name of the place. It's up on a mountain. But what they did when you got to the restaurant was if you had a necktie on, they would proceed to cut it off for you because they did a lot of neckties. Uh, we were we were a little bit lost getting there the first time I went with, with Brent and Buster. And they were driving not the uh, motorhome at the time, but one of the uh, Buicks, I think, that had been the most of the It was a big old car, something from the 60s or 70s. And we were a little bit lost when we stopped and asked directions to how to get to this restaurant. And the guy looked at the car and he said, I don't think you're going to make it in that ship. <laughs> so, I have a lot of good memories. I remember Martha as a, a young lady, the lady on the left up there, coming out to our farm in the south of town, uh, visiting Lester. Uh, I don't think they were married at the time. I don't know why she was attracted to the guy. <laughs> she, was, she was out there, and I was just a little shaver, and I was pretty bashful around her. But she was quite the lady even then, so I have a lot, a lot of good memories of this family. For one thing, being related to Martha is a blessing. Uh, Gene and Pat have just heard this story because it's one of my favorite memories concerning Martha and Lester. 
As you know, as looking at my age, you hunt at a young age. I was 11 or 12 when this happened, I can't remember which. But we, I had gotten a whole bunch of rabbits, Earl and Junior and I, and he took his home and went home, and I got them all clean, new robes and everything. And uh, my mom said, well, I don't know how to put those. And I thought, well, we'll just make them. I thought, then Martha happened to be visiting and said, no, I'll make rabbits too. Well, that was fine. I, I thought it sounded great, but I had a good sister. Every Sunday when Lassie came on, Dad and I went out and shot baskets or played catch, but she ball clear through Lassie. She's very sensitive in that area. So anyway, uh, Martha warned everybody and her family, don't mention that we're eating rabbit stew. Well, the dinner is going very good. There's the Hudson's and the Schistler's around the big Schistler table having a good time. And out of nowhere, Lester says, Martha, this is the best rabbit stew we've ever had. <laughs> and there went my sister. <laughs> the look Martha gave Hudson, I have cherished it forever. <laughs> she didn't say a word, she just looked. <laughs> I'm going to tack on my memory now since I knew I'd be up here anyway. Um, but I know I can't be the only grandkid who looks back at all our Christmas Eves at Grandma's house where she must have been tired of cooking as much because she would do the crab sticks and the shrimp for us um, and have that. Um, Grandma's was always where I went to when I was sick and got 7-Up and crackers and played with Mom's old dolls. Um, I had the privilege of going to Arizona to help Grandma drive home from one of her winters out there. And that was really cool because here she was always grandma and there I got to see Martha and that was kind of cool to see her out of her grandma role and have beer and pizza with grandma at Oregon Stop Pizza it was pretty fun. Um, and then I know my brother got the trip through the, was it a wheat field in the snow? I got the cow poop coming out of the cattle track, truck in front of us splattering all over our windshield and had to stop and clean that up. Um, but one of my favorite mem memories of grandma is a weird one because it was when I was in the hospital. And when I was in the hospital, things were crazy. It was loud. I was, always had visitors. And one night she stayed with me so mom and dad could go home and rest. And she didn't say a word. She sat there and patted my hand and just knowing I needed her to be there, but I didn't need talk. And she was just there for me. And that was the best night of rest I got the entire time in the hospital. So I apparently knew Grandma was special a long time ago because I wrote an essay in eighth grade, which is what I'll be reading now. Um, and this was the, from my, my eighth grade head in 1995, it looks like. Martha Jane Sloats Hudson, AKA Grandma. Martha Jane Sloats Hudson, who was born in her home on March 4th, 1928, is a person I love and admire greatly. She is a strong, loving, and determined woman. She is my wonderful grandmother, and I hope she's around for many years to come. Martha Jane Sloats grew up in Elmwood, Illinois. She grew up as the youngest child with an older brother, Donald, and an older sister, Marjorie. Their parents, Howard and Louise Schistler Sloats, were there to help them as they grew up. When Martha became an adult, she married a wonderful man named Lester Hudson on January 15, 1949. They became the proud parents of Patr Patricia Ann, my mother, Joan Marie, Ellen Louise, and Howard Rockwell, better known as Rocky. My grandmother was a farmer's wife who helped in the fields and cooked for the workers. Later, her children grew up, got married, and became the parents to her eight grandchildren. Her grandchildren include Tom, Angie, Matt, David, Alicia, Sam, Hannah, and me. Then a very sad day came. After fighting battles with cancer, my grandfather lost the battles and his life to cancer. My grandmother got back on her feet and started traveling. She has been to Australia, England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, South America, and many of the 50 states so far. She is in Arizona for five months at this time. I hope I will be able to travel like she does someday. Martha Hudson has acquired many wonderful traits during her lifetime. I admire her because she is a strong woman. I believe she gets her strength from her faith in God. When my grandpa was sick, she always seemed so strong and put together even during the worst times. She is also a very loving woman. I know this because of the stories I hear and the way she treats the ones close to her. 
One trait I really admire about my grandma is that she is determined. If she wants to go on a, on a trip and her children or someone tells her it might be dangerous or isn't a great idea, she'll go anyway. It's like she says, I've got the health and the money to do this, so I'm going to do it. I hope I can say that when I get to that point in my life. She is also a very caring, honest, lovely, respected, and loved woman. If I described everything I love about Martha Jane Sloats Hudson, this paper would go on for miles. I respect and love my grandmother. I wish she could live forever. Since she can't, I hope she lives for many more years so I can learn as much as I can from her before she leaves to join my grandfather in, in, grandfather in heaven. I have a couple of things to share. The, the first one, when Sam graduated from college, he went to Eastern, which is over on the east side of the state in Amish territory. And they asked mom if she wanted to go to graduation. And she said, sure. So I called mom on Monday morning and I said, well, how was, how was graduation? Oh, it was beautiful. It was the pomp and circumstance. We were so proud of Sam. She said, I got to see David Clem's picture on the, the wall of fame. And she, and, and she said, and then Rock took us out for supper. And I said, well, where did you go? And she said, we went to Hooters. <laughs> what? Yeah, we went to Hooters. I said, Rock took you to Hooters? <laughs> she said, well, yeah. She said, you know, they got the good fried chicken and the real mashed potatoes and the, the homemade pies. I said, wait, wait. Do you happen to mean the Amish restaurant Yoders? <laughs> oh, yeah, Yoders, not Hooters, Yoders. When, when, when dad died, mom was only 62, and she wasn't gonna sit on her front porch and watch life pass her by. So, um, at some point, I don't know how many years after, she put a new message on her answering machine. If at home you do not find me, leave a message to remind me. Did any of you ever, raise, show your hands, did any of you ever call Martha and get that message? If at home you do not find, okay, raise your hands again. How many of you thought that was really cheesy? <laughs> We got to the point, let's please be home so we don't have to hear that message. <laughs> well, where are you today, Mom? Well, maybe she was China painting with Aunt Melba or Lois Wright. Or she, oh, today I was at lunch with Jane or Alma or Roberta, Betty, Carol, gals from the card club. Oh, no, today we had the cookout with Wilsons and Bowies and Hearse and Boyers and Crouches. If at home you do not find me, leave a message to remind me. <sighs> well, we knew never to call while she was traveling. She went all over, as Jennifer said. Where were you today, Mom? Oh, I made a tea ring and I took it to, the, the, to Harold at the bank. Or, oh, I forgot, today was your day if you volunteered at Proctor Hospital. Well, then when she started going to Arizona, I thought she loved to sit in the sun, just get her folding chair out in the driveway and sit in the sun, but she'd have her phone with her. So I thought, well, she should answer. If at home you do not find me, leave a message to remind me. Well, where were you today, Mom? Oh, I was at swimming exercise, or I was teaching China painting, or we had choir practice. Oh, I was playing cards with the neighbors. And then when she moved to Proctor Place, I thought, finally. <laughs> if at home you do not find me, leave a message to remind me. Well, what were you doing today, Mom? She was at her writing class, or exercise class, or Bible study. Or she was playing nickel-nickel down the hall with a couple of ladies. I don't even know what nickel nickel is. <sighs> so, where are you today, Mom? Where are you today? 
I have no doubt where you are today, Mom. You are standing at the feet of Jesus with Dad right by your side. Amen. Amen. I invite you now to take out your hymnal and to stand and to join me singing Because He Lives, number 275. Let us pray. O oh God of grace, you have given us new and living hope in Jesus Christ. We thank you that by dying, Christ destroyed the power of death, and by rising from the grave, opened the way to eternal life. Help us to know that because he lives, we shall live also. For you alone are immortal, the creator and maker of all. We are mortal and formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. This you ordained when you created us, saying, ashes to ashes and dust to dust. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Martha. Acknowledge, we humbly pray, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. And now, people of God, receive the benediction. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, and of the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen. I welcome all of you to this committal portion of our service for Martha Hudson. It is a very brief service, and after this, then we will head back to the church for the time of visitation. Here are the words of scripture that have brought comfort to Christians throughout the ages. I know that my Redeemer lives, and that at the last, he will stand upon the earth. We know that if this earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. And finally from the Psalms, you show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Ensure in certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, 
We commend to Almighty God our sister Martha. We commit her body to the ground, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, earth to earth. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord, says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors and their works follow them. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, support us all the day long until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then in your mercy, grant us a safe lodging and a holy rest and peace at the last, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now receive the blessing, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Amen. Amen. And this concludes the committal portion of our service.